Brutal attacks on bus drivers made headlines in Tampa Bay last year. You may have heard about the two that were attacked with knives in Hillsborough County. One of them died behind the wheel. But here's what you probably didn't hear about. The other 24 Hillsborough bus drivers physically attacked in the past three years. And that is where 10 Investigates' Jenna Bourne's research started. But Jenna, you uncovered a much bigger story here. You can't look at this and tell me it's a small problem. It all started with these handwritten records. Nearly 500 bus drivers wrote that passengers physically or verbally abused them in the past three years. We found the job is getting more dangerous quickly and Hart could be doing more to protect drivers. This guy just stabbed the bus driver in the neck. He's trying to penetrate the weapon into my, to my heart. I said, sir, you need to sit down. So he turned around and slapped me in my face. Was the bus moving? The bus was moving on I-4. Vera Johnson kept her cool. She didn't lose control of that massive bus on I-4. But those are the stakes. Lives are on the line inside the bus and out. You share the roads with these bus drivers. And more and more often in Hillsborough County, they're under attack behind the wheel. There's a lot of people that don't feel safe. They just don't say nothing anymore because we ain't getting nowhere. Ten investigates rode heart buses six times, and like millions of passengers each year, our experience was uneventful. But attacks on heart bus drivers went up in 2019, big time. A year when attacks at all the other transit providers we checked went down. Ten investigates looked through records of physical and verbal attacks from Citrus Connection in Polk County, Pinellas Suncoast Transit Authority, Sarasota County Area Transit, and Lynx in Central Florida for the past three years. All of them had a decrease in 2019, but at heart, 10 investigates found the opposite trend. 16 heart drivers were physically attacked in 2019, a 220% increase. Yeah. More heart drivers were attacked in 2019 than the previous two years combined. Verbal attacks like death threats and racial slurs shot up too by 56%. According to Lynx in Central Florida's records, it had twice the ridership of heart in 2019, but only half as many physical attacks on drivers. We brought those numbers to the bus drivers union. I'm just shocked. So you didn't even know until we brought it to your attention just how severe the problem was for heart. Well, I didn't think it was this high. So we went straight to Hart Director of Safety and Security, well, Colin Malloy. Hart provides nearly 13 million trips every year. So the vast, vast majority of those trips, we have great customers, we have great bus operators. Well, the ridership hasn't really changed over the past three years in terms of the amount of rides you guys have been giving. So that's not really much of an explanation as to why we've seen an increase in attacks. Yeah, in terms of, um, you know, our biggest increase we've seen have been these verbal altercations. And it there's is also one of been, the I'm sorry to interrupt you, yeah. but there's also been a huge increase in physical attacks. You're telling me Hart doesn't know why that is? No. What, what I'm saying is that um, Hart takes all of these situations very seriously. The guy split his neck, sir. The guy is actually dead right now. After Thomas Dunn was killed, Hart says it spent more than a million dollars to add these protective shields to its fleet. These signs on the shields warn passengers assaulting a driver is a crime. Hart upgraded its surveillance camera systems, armed the security guards at transit stations, and had its drivers do de-escalation training with the sheriff's office. To cut down on confrontations about money, drivers got this message in December telling them, Please do not challenge fares. If a patron underpays, does not have a discount card, or does not pay the fare at all, let them ride. There are bigger changes that Hart hasn't made yet. Me punching me on the face. A year and a half after this Polk County bus driver was punched in the face, Citrus Connection is now allowing drivers to carry pepper spray. The National Bus Drivers Union tells 10 Investigates it doesn't know of any other transit providers in the country that allow drivers to carry weapons. I don't mind being first if it's the right thing. 
And I believe this indeed is the right thing for our drivers and for our citizens. Now keep in mind, Citrus Connection buses don't have driver shields. Do you worry about what happens if a driver uses pepper spray and either misfires or could it permeate the bus? Of course, uh, with anything uh, new and especially with something like this, there could be risk. And would it permeate the bus? Probably. The bottom line is if everybody goes home that night, is is the risk uh, worth the reward. Heart driver Schneider Prophet tells 10 Investigates a passenger pepper sprayed him and slashed him with a box cutter again and again. An Army veteran, Prophet says Hart should allow drivers with concealed carry permits to carry guns for self-defense. I would say at least 50% of drivers carry the means to protect themselves. So you're saying you know of drivers who are already carrying guns. You can always get another job but you cannot get another life. Another problem we found in these records, people who attack bus drivers are often long gone by the time officers get there. I asked Hart if it's time to have armed security on buses, and they tell me they're testing out a pilot program for that. This is just one of the topics we take a deeper dive into on our website. And if you want to find out more about it, you can go to WTSP.com slash abuse. You'll also find year-to-year -year breakdowns of physical and verbal abuse against drivers for each transit authority that we've talked about.